Hello and welcome to my Patchness Rundown for the 5th of August. This week's update introduces even more changes to the Sanctum of Rebirth as well as a huge quality of life change to targeting during PVM scenarios. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Added UI pop-ups for Divine Protection and Resurrection Sickness to the normal mode of Sanctum of Rebirth when experiencing these mechanics for the first time. The messages indicating that souls are spawning is only shown once per phase. I'm surprised they removed this as it was a nice reminder of when the souls were spawning again if one was missed on the rotation. They've also highlighted the key text green within this information box to make it quicker to read. The time that it takes for the first soul to spawn after phasing Vermix in hard mode has been reduced from 7.2 to 6 seconds. This is a really nice sweet spot as it's not too slow or too fast. If players kill the coil spawn in the northwest or northeast location, the second set of souls will spawn up to 7.2 seconds faster on their respective side. This almost feels instantaneous with no delay, but no one is going to take advantage of this as most players won't be dumping damage on the coil spawns and even then it will only benefit them if they miss a soul. I think they should try to heavily incentivize killing optional enemies through fun benefits rather than the reduction of damage. These numbers are placeholders but they could make it so if players kill the northwest call spawn they get 25% more damage for the rest of the kill and if players kill the northeast call spawn they get 50% more adrenaline generation from all sources for the rest of the kill. I would then tune these numbers to the point where some players may opt into engaging with it. Vermix's soul bomb is no longer guaranteed to hit players, instead it telegraphs a 3x3 area effect where the player is currently standing. This is a good change as Vermix dealt a ton of unavoidable damage, kinda reminded me of Vorkath, which I'm sure we can all agree is not a fun gameplay experience nor a good way of creating a challenge. Kezalam's phase life points have been increased from 396k to 400k for phase 2 and 198k to 200k for phase 3 to make it easier to remember. Reduce the delay of being able to move out of the Moonstone Prison from 0.6 seconds to 0 seconds. This feels so much smoother now. Players can now instantly move out of the prison when the life points hit 0. Kezalam's line attack animation has been extended to cover all of its hits. Hardmode Necrata Reaper Points reward has been increased from 20 to 25. A missing Volatile Scarab should now correctly spawn in a 4 player Necrata encounter. Necrata's 9x9 shockwave mechanic during the last phase has had its animation slightly adjusted to match the timing of when the attack hits. Only the telegraph timing was moved up one tick so it might feel faster but the damage timing remains the same. Moving on to General. Defensive effects including Resonance, Divert, Devotion, Devoted Perk and Disruption Shield have been reverted to display one damage once again instead of a shield hit marker when negating damage. This is to allow players to differentiate between actual miss by the enemy and when damage is negated by one of the listed effects. A good example of this is a player uses Disruption Shield and they're hit by an enemy's auto attack and they see a shield hit marker. Before they wouldn't know whether the enemy missed or whether the Disruption Shield soaked the hit. The following actions now have improved targeting behavior. Dive only allows players to target the ground. Intercept only allows players to target other players. Herbal Bombs only allows players to target NPCs and the ground. Holy moly, this is huge. This is something a lot of people have been asking for ages. Over the years, RuneScape has become more of a clutter, not only in animations, but also entities like necromantic conjurations, which meant more things players can misclick their targeted actions on, like dive. Ultimately, this now means players can confidently click their dive onto their desired ground location without having to worry about misclicking on familiars, conjurations, other players, or even enemies. The only other addition I would like to see is to allow players to disable the ability to use Blade Dive as I myself sometimes forget that equipping Dual World Melee may lead me to using Blade Dive rather than Dive for mobility purposes and unintentionally incurring the global cooldown. This change also doesn't include Blade Dive as it can deal damage and Intercept only works from the action bar which is a fine compromise as I assume that's how most players use it. 
However, it seems that Herbalo bombs, including vulnerability bombs, do not work as suggested and can still be used on entities that result in an error. And that's it for this week's patch notes. I can't tell you guys how amazing it is to see all of these visual clarity and clutter changes. I think they just make the game feel smoother and more responsive. And I can't wait to see what they have planned next. Anyways, that's it from me. Thank you for watching and take care.